The last few videos, we've done a lot of concept work, understanding how storage policies work, our RAID 0, our RAID 1, and our RAID 5 policy. For this video, I want to jump into vCenter and let's create some storage policies and apply some storage policies. I'm starting out on the home page. I want to click on policies and profiles next. I'll click on our VM storage policies. Towards the bottom, we've got our vSAN default storage policy. This is our RAID 1 FTT of 1 configuration. I'm going to click on it and we can walk through some of the different configurations. Starting out with our storage type. This is saying it's applying towards vSAN. We then have our site disaster tolerance. If we had a standard cluster, which is like our three node model, or if we had a stretch cluster, we would configure this option. For this environment, we've got a four node cluster, and that'll become important when we create a RAID 5 policy, and we're gonna be using our standard cluster. Underneath that, we've got our failures to tolerate. How many failures do we wanna tolerate in the environment? This is our RAID 1 mirroring policy, tolerating a single failure, FTT of one. Then our number of stripes. We're not gonna spend a lot of time talking about stripes, but stripes is taking our component and breaking it into multiple smaller pieces. If you're thinking about changing stripes from a performance perspective, reach out to support and say, this is my performance metrics, this is what I'm trying to accomplish, and they can take a look at it and make some recommendations. We then have our IOP limits. If we have a noisy neighbor VM or an application that's using a lot of IOPS, we can put a hard limit in place, maybe a thousand IOPS, that says it can't go past this current amount. Next is our object space reservation. You may see this abbreviated as OSR, but this is thick provision or thin provision. By default, we thin provision our objects. But when we go to the settings, we walk through our policy creation. We can also set that to 25%, 50%, or 75%. So if we'd created a VMDK and we said, I want 75% object space reservation, well, 75% of it would be thick provisioned. And then once you got to 76%, we would grow that up like a thin provision disk. We then have our flash cast reservation. This is only applicable if you have a hybrid environment. And a hybrid environment has those spinning disks for the capacity tier. In a hybrid environment, we do a 70-30 split of that cache disk. 70% used for reads, 30% used for writes. And if we incremented this, let's say 1%, any VMs we applied this policy to would be guaranteed 1% of our flash read cache. We recommend leaving it as zero to let vSAN determine how much flash cache is recommended for each VM. Our second to last option is our checksums. We recommend leaving this set to no. For every block of data, we calculate a checksum to make sure is it correct or not. And then we have our force provisioning. Let's say we've got a three node vSAN cluster and let's say the motherboard dies. We call up the hardware manufacturer and they agreed to send us a new motherboard. The problem though is that motherboard is not gonna be arriving until tomorrow. And let's say someone comes in and they need to create a VM. It's an absolute emergency, we have to create a VM. With our RAID 1 FTT of one policy, we need a minimum of three ESXi hosts. Well, in this case, we've only got two ESXi hosts, so we can't deploy our VM to it. But what force provisioning says is, okay, we don't have the available hosts that we need, but you know what we can do in the meantime is deploy this VM as a RAID 0 object. And when that host comes along, that third host, whenever it's fixed, that motherboard replacement, then we'll go ahead and turn it into an FTT of one. So it still allows you to deploy the VM and then it'll heal itself or make it compliant with that storage policy when that third node comes into play. My personal recommendation is that we clone this policy to another policy, a RAID 1 specific policy. That way, if you ever had any kind of issues in the future, we could roll back to our default if we needed it. And to do that, I can click on the storage policy and click on clone. I'll give it a name and click on next. This policy will be used for our vSAN data store. So we see that's already checked. I'm going to click on next. For availability, we can see that none standard cluster. If I click on the dropdown, all those other settings are related to stretch clusters. And then underneath of it, we have our failures to tolerate. How many failures do you want to tolerate in the environment? We'll explore this one just in a few minutes. For storage compatibility, this says what data stores are compliant with this storage policy. In this case, vSAN. But let's say we're creating a RAID 5 policy and we only had three ESXi hosts, or we had a hybrid environment we would see nothing listed here because it doesn't match that storage policy requirements. So if you're seeing that, just double check the storage policy to make sure is it configured correctly. I'm gonna click on next. We can then review our settings and click on finish. At this point, we have cloned a RAID 1 policy. Let's go walk through the process of creating a RAID 0 and a RAID 5 policy. I'm gonna click on create VM storage policy. We'll create a RAID 0 policy. I'm gonna click on enable rules for vSAN storage and then click on next.
For site disaster tolerance, we're going to leave this set to our standard cluster because we're just using a standard cluster. And then for our failures to tolerate, I can click on the dropdown and we can see no data redundancy. This would be for our RAID 0 policy. We also have two failures, three failures for our mirroring policies, and we've got our RAID 5, RAID 6 for our ratio coding policies. I'm going to click on the Next button. Again, we can see our vSAN data store. I'm going to click on Next, review our settings, and then click on Finish. We're going to create one more policy, and we'll walk through some of those advanced options we talked about earlier. For our failures to tolerate, I'm going to click on One Failure, RAID 5, Erasure Coding. When we click on our advanced policy rules, that shows us our options we talked about earlier. From our number of disk stripes, which we recommend leaving at the default, to our IOP limits, our OSR, our flash cache reservation, our disabled checksum, and our force provisioning. For this one, we're going to keep it all as a default, which we would recommend in a production environment. I'm going to click on Next. We can see our vSAN data store listed. And again, if we don't see it listed, just double check our policy settings versus our environment to see why is there a disconnect. I'm going to click on Next. We'll review the settings and then click on Finish. Now that we've created three different policies, let's go to our VMs and templates and apply those policies. I've already created a test VM. I'm going to click on Configure and then go down to Policies. We can see our VM is using the default storage policy. Let's do some customization on those disks. Let's say hard drive one is our OS. For that one, we don't need that screaming fast performance. Let's take advantage of that space savings with our RAID 5 policy. Let's say hard drive two, that's our application disk. We want to give that a RAID 1 policy, that RAID 1 that we cloned off. And then for our third drive, let's say that's just some scratch space. It's not really important if we lose it. Let's configure that as RAID 0. So in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to click on the VM storage policies, or to say the edit VM storage policies. You'll notice at the top, there's a drop down. And this is saying I want to set the VM storage policy to RAID 1. I'm going to click on OK. You'll notice that it changed all of our disks to that RAID 1 policy. That's not what we wanted. We wanted to customize our policies on a per VMDK basis. So I'm going to click on our edit VM storage policies again. This time, I'm going to click on the configure per disk. This allows us to tweak and tune our policies. For that first hard drive, we said we wanted our RAID 5 policy. Take advantage of that space savings. For hard drive 2, we don't have to do anything. We wanted that RAID 1 policy. And then for hard drive 3, we wanted that RAID 0 policy. vSAN has updated our policies. Let's go back to the policies and look at that VM Compliance tab. I'm going to click on our menu, Policies and Profiles, click on VM Storage Policies. And let's start off, we've already selected our RAID 0 policy, so let's take a look at that one. I'm going to click on VM Compliance. And you can see we have one VM that's already selected. This is saying that this storage policy VM, it's using a RAID 0 policy. Same thing with our RAID 1 policy, and same thing with our RAID 5 policy. All three of these VMs say they have a policy associated with it. We don't know exactly which VMDKs or which objects are associated with it. We'll talk about that here in a moment. One more thing I want to point out is our compliance status. This has a nice green check saying that this particular object or this particular VM is compliant with its storage policies. Let's put one of our hosts in maintenance mode. In a future video, we're going to be talking more about maintenance mode. I want you to feel comfortable with objects and components and different types of policies before we started talking about our maintenance mode options. For right now, I'm just going to choose the ensure accessibility, which we'll talk about in a future video. I'm going to go back to our policies and profiles, go back to our VM storage policies. In our RAID 5 policy, we can see our VM is showing is not compliant. For us to have a successful RAID 5 policy, we need a minimum of four ESXi hosts. Since we just put one of our hosts in maintenance mode, it's no longer contributing compute, no longer contributing storage. As a result, our VM is no longer compliant with it. But let's do a little bit deeper digging. I'm going to click on our vSAN cluster, click on monitor, and then go down to virtual objects. We can find this underneath our vSAN section. And this gives us a breakdown of our different objects that's on our vSAN data store. We can see we've got our storage policy VM, and hard drive one is currently showing reduced availability with no rebuild delay. I'm going to click on hard drive one and then click on view placement details. This allows us to see our component breakdown. We've got four components for a RAID 5 policy. Three of them are in an active state and one is in an absent state. And that's because we took that resource. We took that host and we put it into maintenance mode. It's no longer participating from a storage perspective or a compute perspective. If we took node four or host four out of maintenance mode, it would come back into a nice active state. I'm going to click on the close button. There's one last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up this video. Let's say in your environment, you only want to use RAID 5. You don't want to use any other type of storage policy. Sure, you could go to each individual VM as you create it and change it to the RAID 5 policy. 
Alternatively, you could change the policy on the data store. At the bottom, I can see our default storage policy. I'm gonna click on edit and then choose RAID 5 and click OK. Now when we create a VM, we can choose the data store default policy and that'll be our RAID 5 policy. So first thing before we create a VM with this default policy, I'm gonna take our host four out of maintenance mode. I'm then gonna go and create a VM. I'm gonna choose our vSAN data store. At the bottom, we've got our compatibility check succeeded. This means that it looked at the VM, looked at the policy and said, yes, we can deploy it here. If we saw a warning message, we just need to investigate why we have that warning message. At the top, we've got our data store default. This is saying whatever is applied to the data store, I wanna have it also applied to the VM. In this case, our RAID 5 policy. I'm gonna quickly finish the rest of the deployment and we'll take a look at that object. Now that our RAID 5 VM has been deployed, I'm gonna click on it, then click on configure and click on policies. You'll notice our VM home object, which I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but VM home is our namespace object. And our namespace object stores our configuration file, how much memory, how much CPU for this VM, stores our VMware.log file, when we power it on, when we power it off, reset, et cetera, and it stores our friendly name. In this case, RAID 5 VM, because that's what we called our VM. So our VM home object is using our RAID 5 policy, and our hard drive one is using our RAID 5 policy. And I think at this point, we've covered a lot of information about our storage policies, and I think we're in a good place to wrap up this video. We start off by cloning a storage policy and creating two new storage policies. After that, we turned our attention to our VM, and we asked, what storage policy are you using? How do we change that storage policy? And how do we check the health status of that policy? We then finished up by going to our data store and saying, how do we change the default data store policy? That way, all the VMs and all the objects we deploy in the future will get this storage policy. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.